hybrid editing made easy. This Discover Mirrorless vlog post is brought to you by ProShow. Motodex.com. All right, so I realized the other night when I was showing you how the shotgun microphone sounds, I wasn't actually using the shotgun microphone. I was using the stereo mic. Now this is the microphone here, and the interesting thing about this is when it's paired up with the GH3 or the G6, those are the only two that it currently works on properly, it goes in there and electronically you can take it and tell it if you want to use shotgun mode or stereo mode. It's got the shotgun mic, which comes out of here. This is all the rejection ports right here, so they reject all the sound from the sides. And then it's got this microphone on top here. This is the stereo mic. Really interesting microphone. It's uh, pretty versatile. Um, but, you know, last time I used it, I must have had it set to stereo and not shotgun, and I forgot to check. So always remember to check your settings. Now let me show you exactly what the shotgun microphone sounds like now. Okay, so now I have it set to shotgun microphone, and I'm using the shotgun microphone now. Um, this is how it sounds. Now I'm about three feet away from the camera, so it's not too bad. But if I step back a little farther, you're probably going to hear a little bit of a difference. Let me go ahead and do that. Alright, so now I'm about eight to ten feet away, and you can tell there's definitely a little bit of a difference in the way that it sounds. Now, of course, it has to gain up in order to hear my voice, so that's one of the reasons why having good microphone placement within your actual subject makes a lot of sense. Now speaking of microphone placement, I've got the shotgun microphone off the camera again. Now I'm going to show you what it sounds like when you have it like this. Normally we mount it out of the frame, something like this, and it'd be on a stand, some kind of a boom arm, and it picks up fairly decent audio. This is how a lot of the studios do it. They have a person who actually has a pole who stands there, holds the microphone up in the air, out of frame, and captures the voices of the actors working. They don't use a lot of these lavalier kind of microphones. They're more for electronic news gathering, or for stage performance, or say churches when the minister is talking. That's what lavalier microphones are really good for. All right, so now I'm back on my lavalier microphone, and I want to tell you a little bit more about mic placement. Now, the other night I was wearing one of my fancy uh, dress shirts, and right now I'm wearing a t-shirt because it's really warm out. So I have it mounted a little bit down my shirt today. You can kind of see it here. Another good way to do it is some people take some kind of a chain. They like to do that uh, in Jerry Springer, for example. When people rip off their shirts, well, they have a chain with the microphone attached that they put on them. Uh, that's another way to do it. Keeps the microphone so they can be able to be heard. Um, another way is something I've done before for some music performances, and it's something they do for a lot of stage performances, for theatrical stuff. Um, and it actually takes a different kind of lavalier mic to do it correctly because it has a high gain output on it. And that is mounting in the hair. But in, and for me, you know, I like to wear these fedoras. So you can actually get away with running it back behind like this and attaching it to the hat. Now I'm going to be doing it a little sloppier today. You can see it all. But if you hit it really well, it's one of the ways to get away with holding it there without really being noticeable. So there's actually a couple of rules that play into what exactly I'm showing you here. One of them is called the signal to noise ratio. And that has to do with the signal, which is my voice, versus the noise, which is the ambient sound in the environment. Now the closer the microphone is, the more that it's going to pick up my voice and less of the ambient. The farther away, the more that it has to gain up in order to hear me loud enough, which also means it increases the, the noise coming from the background. So that's another way that you can help to control hiss in your recordings, is by having a good, strong, solid source. So microphone placement is really important. Another thing that plays into this is called proximity effect. And that has to do with the way that my voice sounds the closer it is to the microphone. Now this has to do with different microphones as well. Uh, different ones produce different kinds of sounds. But you notice that my voice is a little more bassy versus when we were using the shotgun or the stereo microphone built into the shotgun mic as well. It sounded a little more tinny sounding. Uh, think of this. When a fire engine goes by, you hear it in the distance, it kind of sounds tinny-ish. But when it starts coming close to you, 
you get more bass sound. And that has to, it has to do with how the audio waves actually flow through the air. Pretty interesting, huh? All right, sorry for that little mix up, guys. I hope that you can really understand the audio better now and how microphone placement can really improve your hybrid photography. And in turn, that's gonna make you a better photographer. Now I gotta get going, but I will see you again soon. Please make sure to check out hybridphoto.pro every single day for the latest and greatest hybrid photography, e-products, audio, LED, and a whole lot more. Also jump over to our premium industry-leading photography education site, thephotochannel.pro. I will be seeing you guys again soon, but remember to keep it simple and get out there and shoot. Bye. Hybrid editing made easy. This Discover Mirrorless vlog post is brought to you by ProShow. Photodex.com.